Good evening, President, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. Welcome to the 214th meeting of the ICG Toastmasters Club. I'm your friendly neighborhood Sergeant Ram Stuti Gaitonde, and today we're all going to be falling head over heels in love with Toastmasters. I shall begin by reading the mission statement of our club. The mission of a Toastmasters Club is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. I would also like to mention the ground rules that we will be following during this meeting. Kindly ensure that your cell phones are switched off. In case you've logged in from your cell phone, please ensure that it is on silent mode. Kindly mute yourself once you have finished speaking. Please ensure that you are in an area with less noise and disturbance and one with good internet connectivity. If you suddenly do find yourself logged out during the course of the meeting, please do rejoin. Lastly, I'd like to request all of you to keep your videos on because your reactions motivate our speakers. With this, it's now time for my favorite segment, the fact of the day, but there's a twist. Because all of us here love, love so much, I decided to bring to you two facts of the day. Did you know a woman is more likely to accept a proposal after she has eaten a meal? So to all you boys out there planning to propose to that cute girl, make sure that she's eaten first. And the second fact of the day is, did you know men who kiss their wives every morning are more likely to live five years longer? Well, with this, we are now ready to begin. Sit back and relax as I hand over to the very charismatic president of our club. He's ever energetic and radiant. His optimism and magnetic cheer all keep our club going. Over to you, Toastmaster Sertorio. Thank you, Stuti. I think being married for seven years, I can't use your first advice. I can't propose somebody again. But your second advice, I'll <laughs> definitely try to use. No? Leave a little longer. Hi, everybody. It's great to see you in all red colors. For the guest out there, let me explain what Toastmasters is. Toastmaster is an organization started almost a hundred years ago by Ralph Smedley to look into the public speaking and leadership skills of youth. This is an online meeting. So the agenda of the meeting is posted in a chat box. So do open it and go to it. I see some guests today. Ritu Yadav, a prospective first a prospective uh, member. Can you unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Ritu and uh, currently I'm working as a content writer. I, I live in Porvorim and I shifted here in Goa three years back when I got married. So looking forward to what this uh, organization and this team has to offer to me. And thank you all for having me. Thank you, Ritu. And uh, hope you can participate and do participate in the table topics later yeah, on. Thank you. The second guest I see is my friend, Clyde. Clyde, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Clyde Narona. Um, I'm a software developer uh, uh, and I'm joining this, uh, this meeting because I'm planning on joining Toastmasters. Just wanted to get a uh, hang of how these meetings uh, go. So just here to observe and uh, experience as much as I can before uh, joining uh, this club. So yeah, and I am a history enthusiast uh, I I spoken to Sartoria about that. He is also a history, history enthusiast. Uh, so yeah, I have a blog about the history of Goa. So I spend my time on that as well. So yeah, that's about me. 
Thank you, Clyde. And as Clyde said, we don't only share our surname together, but we also share a love for history. And Clyde has promised to give one speech if he becomes a Toastmaster on how Panjim was created. So Clyde, we are hoping that one day we will hear how Panjim was created from you very soon. Next, we have a very friendly guest, Nutan Kamat. Ms. Nutan Kamat, can you introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. Yeah. Hi, good evening. Uh, I am Nutan Kamat, as uh, Sartorio already mentioned. Uh, I've also pretty much joined, like how Clyde mentioned, I kind of wanted to get the hang of what Toastmaster is all about. Uh, in, I'm, I come from a software background and I'm currently working in uh, Optel. I'm leading the research and development department uh, in software and uh, pretty much looking forward to this because I felt like it's been a while uh, due to the pandemic and a lot of reasons, there's a lot, you know, there's a less of networking happening uh, and I want to look forward to meeting new people, seeing their perspectives and uh, listening to a lot of you know topics being spoken of uh, so yeah looking forward to this and hoping i'll be like a full-time uh, member soon so yeah this is my first and uh, looking forward to it thank you yeah. hoping to uh, you make your decision by tonight <laughs> yes yeah, sure, and yeah i have some friends working in Optel, so i think yeah, it's good to be a common friends next uh, we have the president of Babsa Toastmasters Club, the dynamic David. David? David, can you introduce yourself? Okay, I think Babsa card doesn't want to talk at the moment. I can, can you hear me? Yes. You finally. Yeah. Yeah, I'm David. What's your question? Can you introduce yourself? yourself? Sorry, my yeah. Son is... I'm uh, David from Mapsa Toastmasters, the presiding officer. Yesterday you were the, you are there for the meeting, right? Ah, huh? Sir you are online yes. with us. Yes. Okay. I'm here because uh, Dr. Lloyd told me to join today. Sorry, I came late because I had guests in the house. That's all. I'm happy to be with you all. I've been to your club, ICG. I'm a very close friend of uh, Farida. Okay, can I hear from you? I can't hear you. I'm sorry, my youngest son has come and he uh, very dearly wants my attention. So okay, I that's good. Mute. <laughs> So we also have uh, David. Now David, we all. We have Rita Joshi. Miss Rita Joshi, can you unmute and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm architect Rita Modi Joshi. And um, doctor has sent me an invitation and one of my clients, Jason Magee from MAPSA, both are from MAPSA club. So I wanted to see what Toastmasters is all about. Thank you. And thank you for joining Vita and uh, hope you will participate in our table topics. Session. Sure, sure. And now we have one more doctor, Dr. Vishwaraj. I guess he's a friend of Dr. Lloyd too. Can you introduce yourself, Dr. Vishwaraj? Hi, good evening all. I'm Dr. Vishwaraj. Yes, you rightly said it. I'm a good friend of Dr. Lloyd. Uh, it's uh, because of him that I'm introduced to Toastmasters. And I'm looking forward to hear from all of you all. Thank you. Okay. We are looking at uh, to hear more from you, Dr. Vishwaraj. So yeah, do sure. wait till the end of the meeting and there's a table topic session, so you can participate in that and we would love to hear your feedback at the end of the meeting. Informative. Thank you. 
we have uh, another guest, Larina. Can you unmute, show yourself and introduce yourself? Yes. Hello. Yes. Yeah, I'm Larina from Anafon Toastmasters, Margao. Okay. I've just come to attend the meeting. Uh, many times I try to attend other meetings, but I've not, never got a chance. So I just want to see how. Okay, thank you, Larina. And uh, yeah, do participate in them. Thank you. Okay, so now we come to the, the business part of the meeting. To carry on this today's meeting, we have a young superstar of the ICG Toastmasters Club. He's the youngest in a club. And one might think that he has a very small love life. But don't underestimate this kid. He had his first crush when he was in his third standard. Can you believe it? And for his first Valentine's Day, he gave her a lollipop. Of course, not the entire thing. To host today's meeting, we have the charismatic, the talented, the Shadow Khan of our club, Toastmaster Aman. Put our hands together. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Sartorio. Uh, good evening, my fellow Toastmasters and my dear guests. My name is Aman Bagli and I am the Toastmaster of the day. Uh, I know I have been back after a long time and there were surely ups and downs. But today, let us help each other by spreading a lot of love and happiness. The theme for today is, will you be my Valentine? which actually reminds me of something. People just celebrate Valentine's Day without actually knowing from where it started and how. But don't worry, I'll show you a small video where you will know how it actually started. I'm just going to share my... Saint Valentine was a bishop who lived in the third century in Rome. During his lifetime, the Roman Empire was crumbling down from the attacks of surrounding tribes. Emperor Claudius II, who ruled during the chaos, believed that marriage made soldiers weak. He issued an edict that forbade marriage to ensure the quality of his soldiers. The ban on marriage was a great shock. The kind bishop noticed the injustice of the decree. He held the law of the church and helped lovers who came to him, uniting them in a holy matrimony. But it was only a matter of time before the emperor heard about this friend of lovers and had him arrested. Valentine was imprisoned. While waiting for his sentence, his jailer, Asterius, approached him to use his saintly power and heal his blind daughter. Valentine succeeded and her sight was restored. They became close and fell in love. After a while, the emperor issued a verdict. Valentine was asked to agree with the emperor about the ban on marriage, thus giving up his religion. Valentine refused. Just before his execution, Valentine asked for a pen and paper and signed a farewell message to his lover. From your Valentine. A phrase that lived ever after. Yes, and that is how Valentine's Day was celebrated on the 14th of February when Valentine was executed. You know, there are two types of people on Valentine's Day. First, those who go out with their dates, uh, with their dates, sit on a beach with a champagne, sit for the sunset and enjoy and make the evening a romantic one. And second are those who just take a blanket, pull it over them and go to sleep, just like me. But regardless of that, 
Valentine's Day makes everyone feel special. The love, the warmth, and of course, the romance is so satisfying. And it's not necessary that you have to have a partner for Valentine's Day. You could celebrate with anyone who brings you happiness, who truly loves you, just like your friends, family, etc. In fact, we should spread love every day of the year so that there could be love, peace, and harmony in our country. They say love is in the air. And yes, I believe that it is. So with that, let us proceed with our meeting and make this evening a romantic one. For the benefit of our guests, this meeting is divided into three major sections. The first one is the prepared speech section, where some of our members will come up with their thoughtful and meaningful speeches, just like we have to be prepared with our speeches before proposing our Valentine, you know. The second section is the table topic section, where guests and members without any role can participate. This section will be very helpful for you to be ready to answer a yes or no on the spot if somebody asks you out on the 14th. And the third section is my favorite, where the evaluators or so-called the love gurus for today will help us learn and improve our speeches. Now, we have our role players who will help us out so that we could do better on the 14th of this month. Our first role player for today is the grammarian. When I asked a grammarian what love was according to her, she said, love to her is about complete trust. If you can trust, you never have to doubt love. I would now love to call DTM Mukta to explain her role for today. Over to you, DTM Mukta. Thank you so much, Toastmaster of the Day. Aman, fellow Toastmasters and future Toastmasters, good evening to all of you. It's so lovely to see everybody in red. You have already created a romantic atmosphere on screen. So let me tell you the word of the day for today is romantic. Our uh, Toastmaster of the Day has already used it twice because he is in that mood. What does romantic mean? It means relating to or involving love between two people. And the way it is used in a sentence is I know Umesh and Sharmila are not here. They are probably out on some romantic candlelit dinner. They went on a romantic holiday to Mauritius. I love watching old sentimental romantic movies. So romantic is an adjective. So use it freely. It's a simple word. So I'm sure everybody will have the opportunity to use it often. Use the word of the day. I will make note of it. I will also make a note of all the good language usage and not so good language usage and give my report when called by the general evaluator. But anybody who uses the word of the day romantic do give them a thumbs up as a sign of appreciation back to you toastmaster of the day thank you very much dtm mukta i'm sure our meeting is going to be very romantic today our second role player for today is the timer now when i asked a timer that if he could do something different on valentine's day then what would it be he said he would try and remember everything he did on Valentine's Day and try and not do it ever again. I would now call upon Toastmaster Sartorio to explain his role for today. Over to you, Toastmaster Sartorio. Hi, everybody. Let me ask you a question. How long do you want your romantic moments to last. Are you happy? And they just finish off? Too fast? Or it might be too boring and it goes on and on. The same thing applies to our speeches. It can't be too short, you'll be disqualified. And it can't be too long, you'll again be disqualified. For today's meeting, I'll share my slides. And also, I have the word of the day and the idiom of the day. 
of course, to help the very lovely grammarian Vitya Mukta. The word of the day is romantic. Idiom of the day is head over heels. So do use it. For the prepared speeches, the slide will turn from white to green end of five minutes. At the end of six minutes, it will turn to yellow. And at the end of seven minutes, it will turn to red. After seven minutes, the participant has 30 seconds to wrap up his speech. Also, don't forget that you have one minute to provide your feedback. For the tables topic section, the green slide will be shown at one minute, the yellow at one minute 30 seconds, and the red at two minutes. For the evaluations, we have the green light at two minutes, at two and a half minutes, we have the yellow light. And at three minutes, you will see the red slide. So best of luck, everybody. And do enjoy the speeches like a romantic moment. Over to you, Toastmaster Aman. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Sertorio. Our third role player for today is the R counter. Now, when I asked our R counter what was his worst Valentine's Day experience, he said it was when he came to know from his mother that the one who he had a secret crush on was already in love with somebody else. I mean, how sad is that? Yeah, I would now call upon Toastmaster Radhakrishnan to explain his role. Over to you, Toastmaster Radhakrishnan. Yes, very good evening, Toastmaster Amen, Toastmaster of the day, and fellow Toastmasters and my dear guests. My role is the R counter. The, the duty of the R counter is to count the filler word, which also called crutch words, like hum, uh, um, and post, where you try to fill the words like uh, Again, repeat words like this means, I mean, I, I, etc. At the end, because this post, this R count, R counter, this uh, words which I told, it affect your uh, efficiency of your communication. That's why it's an important part of the any Toastmaster meeting to so finding out and realize to correct it. So at the end of the session, I'll be give me my report and counting the how many hours and how each of you are used. Thank you. Thank you very much, Toast Toastmaster Radhakrishnan. Our fourth and the final role player for today is the listener. When I asked our listener what was her favorite Valentine's Day memory, she said she didn't have a special Valentine's Day memory yeah. as her husband is very quiet, <laughs> but sometimes he expresses his love by making her adra kwali chai and many more small beautiful things. Mm -hmm. I would now call upon Toastmaster Monica to explain her role for today. Over to you, Toastmaster Monica. Thank you, TM of Yaman. Good evening, uh, my fellow Toastmasters. I'm sure all of us present here have played the game Chinese Whisper. Mm -hmm. In this game, the original sentence takes a back seat and at the end, something new, distorted and funny, which was never said, comes up. Over the years, this game has made me realize the value of being a good listener. Every good conversation starts with a good listener. Being a good listener is just as important as being a good speaker. So as a listener for today's meeting, my role is to note interesting tidbits of information from the speakers of today. And based on that, I'll be asking questions near the end of the meeting to see if everyone was paying attention. So have a romantic evening ahead. Keep listening. Thank you so much. Over to you, Toastmaster Amit. 
Thank you so much, Toastmaster Monica. I'm sure we will have some amazing listeners today in our meeting. Now, let us proceed with the meeting. We now come to the first major section, which is the prepared speeches. Our first speaker for today is Toastmaster Nelly. Now, normally in every Toastmasters meeting, a TMOD introduces the speaker. But today, we will have a special guest introducing Toastmaster Nelly. So Toastmaster Nelly's special guest, please come and introduce her. Hi there, this is Sherry Ann. I'm uh, Nelly's sister. I'm my elder sister. And we're a bunch of four girls and I'm the second and she's the last. So um, I don't have a great poet in me, but I've tried to compile a little few lines for her. So I begin. So our lives were brought together by a greater plan. And I'm sure sometimes you regret me being a part of your clan. The tallest, and yes, you beat us all three, but a bebe, in Portuguese, that's baby. That's what you will always be. Passionate, loving, respectful, are adjectives that define you. Annoying and a tad bit stubborn. Well, I had to add these two. No matter where life leads us, know that this is true. Even in life's, life's toughest days, I will always be there for you. Good luck to you. And uh, yeah, I hope that was- Wow, let us all just give it a round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would now love to call upon her evaluator, Toastmaster Ashish, to state the objectives of her speech. Over to you, Toastmaster Ashish. Thank you, Toastmaster Aman. Uh, Nelly is the speaker today, and uh, I'm going to evaluate her. Her speech is level two, project one, when I met you. And the purpose of her, the, her path is strategic relationships. And the purpose is to identify her primary leadership style or styles combination, and to share some aspect, either she can share some aspect of her primary leadership style or discuss leadership styles in general. So over to you, Nelly. All the best. Thank you, Toastmaster Ashish. Timer, am I good to start? Can you see the screen? Uh, yes, I can see the screen. Can you see yes. it changing? Yes, I can see it changing. Yes. Okay. Yes. When I met you, greetings, my fellow Toastmasters and my esteemed guest. It was 1st of June, 1999. A young girl entered Our Lady of the Rosary High School and sat on the third bench of the second row. Suddenly, a person with smiling face, brown eyes and spectacles enters the room. And we all students stand up to wish their third standard class teacher, who was none other than teacher Asusena Rodriguez. Teacher Asusena Rodriguez, fondly called as teacher Asu was just like her name. Teacher Asusena, strict when it comes to discipline. Yet, mild teacher Asu, fond, loving when it comes to children who are non performers. When I met you, my first mentor who taught me that leadership is leading by example. How many of you are aware of pace setting leadership styles? Can you put a yes or a no in the chat box? Okay, 
since most of you know it and since most of you don't know, let me tell you what it is. A pace setting leadership style is part of emotional leadership theory, wherein a person leads by example. Now, speaking of teacher Aswen, what an impact she had in my life. I had a privilege to meet such a young pace setting leader at such a early age of my life. Let me tell you some instances of her as how she was a pace setting, setting leader in my life. Firstly, she was very compassionate and passionate about teaching. And she loved her work, especially her students, her mentees. And she would never let them be lost, especially the weaker ones and would see that they were at par with the performers. In school, I was a non-performer because as my sister already told you, I was the younger of four, youngest of four girls and was a pampered brat and never felt the urge to study. But teacher Asu saw that I was never lost in a class when I met you. A pace setting mentor sets a benchmark for her mentees or her students so that they can achieve the set goals or even more just by example. Speaking of Asu's mem memories, teacher Asu's memories, it never faded away. It lingers till today. And I often think, what would she do if she were to be in my situation right now, I often lose my temper on my students and would think, what would she do if she were to be in my situation? Would she be counting one to 10 backwards? Or would she scream her lung out? That's when I get my answers. When I met you, I would calm myself down and get my answers automatically. And I would listen to their stories because every child has a story to tell and so do we. A pace setting leader tells us that we emulate good qualities from them just by observation and we become just like them. Speaking of mentors, we've already spoken of them. Let me tell you something about my mentees. My students, they constantly give me life lessons. They tell me that there is no point in stressing, but smiling. So this taught me that I should smile during my stressful times. A pace setting leader or a mentor leads from the front and constantly stands standards for his team so that they achieve their set goals, their minimal man and much more than their minimal management. Proudly today I can say, I have achieved the goal which my pace setting mentor has set for me. I am a special educator and hopefully one day we'd like to start a respite center of my own. Now, how many of you in this audience have met pace setting leaders in your life or earlier days of your life and would like to say to them too, when I met you. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters. Good evening. Wow, let us all have a round of applause for Toastmaster Nelly. What you, Toastmaster of the day? Thank you. We can now have a minute for your comments in the chat box. Timer, please keep a track.
वन मिनट ऑफ ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच टाइम आर सेकेंड स्पीकर फॉर टूडे इज दोस्ट मास्टर आरती and to introduce her we have our special guest too special guest too please come forward and introduce toastmaster aarti well hi she is the superstar of my life we met on 14th feb 2006 to get married well thank you very much aman and toastmaster for giving me this wonderful opportunity to introduce my wife a good friend of mine aarti ayer amazing thank you so much and of course romantic <laughs> she can be extremely cruel she is the swiggy of the house you name the food place she knows it all Are you really uh, lose connection? I think there's a network. There's a little glitch. Okay. Let okay. Let it's us set okay. Set it right before the fourteenth. So. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much to our special guest. Uh, we now. I would now love to call upon her evaluator, Toastmaster Shantanu, to state the objectives of her speech. Over to you, Toastmaster Shantanu. Hello, Toastmasters and guests. My speaker for today, Toastmaster Arthi, will be doing her Level Two Project One of her Persuasive Influence Path. The purpose of a project is to identify her leadership style, and the purpose of a speech is to share an aspect of her leadership style or discuss leadership styles in general. The title of her speech is "Vote for Me." Vote for me, Toastmaster Arthi. Thank you, Toastmaster Shantanu. Toastmaster, the title of her speech is "Vote for Me." Vote for me, Toastmaster Arthi. The stage is all yours. On fourteenth February two thousand twenty-two, Goa will witness an enthralling organized chaos. The Herculean task of choosing a deserving leader for the state, because it is true, a leader can make or break a country. Let's not leap that far. a leader can make or break life experiences wouldn't you all agree with me on that a very good evening those masters of the day fellow those masters and guests the subtle yet powerful influences i had during my growing up years were that of my parents close relatives and teachers and during this process i learned that each one has their own way of dealing with people as a child i was too timid to understand but when i grew up to be a teen i observed more i understood about humans and became conscious about my behavior and responses to them let me explain with an example When I was in class four, I had a maths teacher who believed in my way or the highway. Maths was anyway pretty pretty scary for me, and a teacher like that freaked me out even more. Autocratic leadership. She would want the students to behave in a particular manner. for the homework to be done in a particular way many a times a rational conversation would go flying out of the window in fact she would decide whether we students have understood what was taught in class she was one person i could never relate to a person rather i despised in absolute rebel i went to class very often without completing my homework it was so sad that this strong negative emotion eventually 
fell off and influenced my feelings for maths. I remember this incident when she was teaching fractions in class. I genuinely hadn't got the concept well. I requested her to re-explain it to me again. She got furious. She called me right next to the teacher's table, made me sit down on the floor and made me write, I will not disturb the class again. 50 times in my notebook. That left a lasting impression. Unfortunately, a very, very negative one. Fast forwarding to class 10. My then maths teacher was an absolute contrast to my previous one. She explained the theorems patiently, repeated the explanations wherever necessary. And most importantly, she made a very safe math learning environment. I suddenly grew interested in maths. Thanks to her paternal leadership skills, I volunteered to go up to the board and solve sums, which at that point of time really meant a big deal. For my board exams, I performed well in maths. Actually, I surprised myself with wonderful marks in maths. But no, I didn't go ahead and take up engineering. This is no Bollywood movie. So chill. But surely, I did beat my phobia for maths. Over the years, I have learned that the influence of one good leader weighs much more much, much over the bad ones. Even if one is a born leader, constant evolving is necessary to stay up there and take the crowd along. I am consciously working and learning to inculcate the right traits, to be a leader who can lead by example. I constantly introspect and re-examine myself as a leader and myself as an individual. I try and follow the democratic style of leadership that involves participation of team members, considering and respecting the opinions of the other teams and the team members who work along, and most importantly, not throwing my weight around. My daughter is an absolute bookworm. I was desperate at one point of time to get her enrolled for a sport. I encouraged her to join table tennis because I felt she would do justice to it. I tried to push her a little more when I felt she wasn't showing the kind of interest I wanted her to. But then I realized, gosh, I'm being silly by imposing my autocratic decision on her. A burden I would never want those tender shoulders to carry. I sat down with her and we discussed in length on the various sports options available here. She was just too happy to select basketball. It's been only a few months, but her progress is wonderful. This was a reassurance. The democratic style of leadership really works wonders. But sometimes, just sometimes, sticking to one leadership style is not possible. And that's when I pick the platter of styles and serve it with a little sugar and little spice. And of course, life is unpredictable. So if I decide to contest for the state elections ever, you all know the leadership style that I would follow. So vote for me. Over to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you so much. Let's have a round of applause.
I would now like to call back Toastmaster, our T special guest, because he could not complete as he lost network. Can you please come back? Oh yes. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, so let me jolly well complete the goods that I have to speak about RT. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble. So, yeah. So as I said, a fantastic, a great daughter, a fantastic mother, a responsible sister, and yes, a wonderful friend and a wife to me. That's RT Ayer. Multitasking skills are at a different level altogether. She's a great enthusiast of traveling, swimming, driving, an athlete, and also to mention her skills in basketball and javelin throw in her college days. Finally, to put in, she's a great friend again. And like Billy Joel said, she's like a child and always a woman to me. Thank you. That was so sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I take okay. your permission to exit because I have to leave somewhere. Oh, Thank you very okay. much, Arman and Toastmaster. Yeah. See yeah. you. Thank you. Thank bye you bye. so much. Bye. We can now have a minute for the comments in the chat box. Timer. One minute. Thank you, Timer. Our third and the fi final speaker for today is Toastmaster Lloyd. Well, unfortunately, our special guest number three could not attend our meeting due to some reasons. But don't worry, Toastmaster Lloyd. I still have something for you. Give me one minute. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce to you my loving and handsome husband, Lloyd. A man who has been my strength. He has been kind and caring and has always been there with me at every step of the way. I can depend on his calm nature. I can depend on his positivity and I can depend on his love. And I thank him for being the rock that he is, my wall, and for always being there, the wind beneath my wings. Happy Valentine's Day, my sweet Lloyd, my sweet Valentine. <laughs> oh my God, wasn't that very sweet? <laughs> it was very, very sweet. Okay. Um, I would now love to call upon Toastmaster Lloyd's evaluator, Toastmaster Vishwaja, to state the objectives of his speech. Thank you, Toastmaster Aman. Good evening, everyone. My speaker, Toastmaster Lloyd, is doing his uh, level one project three, uh, research and presenting. The purpose of this project is for the member to learn or review basic research method and present a well-organized and well-researched speech on any topic. It can be informational, humorous, or any style of his choice. <laughs> and his speech title is Plot That Funniest Curve. 
it is a 5 to 7 minute speech all the very best to you over to you toastmaster thank, thank you. you to thank you toastmaster vishwaja toastmaster loy flaunt that prettiest curve flaunt that prettiest curve toastmaster loy the stage is all yours thank you just an audio check am i audible and visible yes you are audible and visible okay once upon a time there was this gentleman who wanted to relocate to a different village he was apprehensive so he needed to be sure he's doing the right thing so he goes to the other village meets the village head and asks him a question how are the people in this village to his surprise the village head counter questions him and asks him how are the people in the village that you come from to which he replied they are angry they are selfish they are mean the village head replies the people in this village too are angry selfish and mean hearing that this man is relocating his neighbor decides to check out the new village too and he has the exact same idea he decides to go to the village head with the same question how are the people in this new village no surprises the village head puts the same counter question how are the people in your village to which this gentleman replies they are kind they are generous they are happy people the same village the same people talking the leader but two different answers what is the moral of this story the moral would be what we see in the world the world will see in you that's exactly why i would like to say let's crush this unhappiness around with a smile doesn't matter if you show your teeth if you puff your lips you crinkle your nose just smile it's never too late we are in february but it's never too late to make that new year resolution not to let the world change your smile but maybe to let your smile change the world well ladies and gentlemen good evening a warm welcome to all my toastmaster friends a hello to everyone online and the guests as well we all know that the smile is one curve that can set everything straight you have probably been told that you should smile more often for the simple reason that you need lesser muscle use in smiling than frowning may i tell you a fact this is not necessarily true because when you smile broadly you need way more muscle than frowning so it's a bigger effort but what's the beauty of it when we smile when we contract those muscles we are able to transmit those beautiful packets of information to the other person who can receive interpret and absorb beautiful isn't it just by varying different muscles contracting them at different levels or percentages we can transmit a beautiful message according to the american dentistry convention in the us they said that about 48% of people remember you because of your smile whereas only 25% will actually remember you for what you first said i have seen this magic work in my routine clinical practice a patient walking into the clinic with pain and distress all over the face she doesn't need to say a word i can understand it she has transmitted it but what can i do if i can use those 15 minutes to not only pen down medication but actually transmit back those positive packets of information positive vibes back to her i can guarantee you my dear friends she will be leaving the clinic much happier and already feeling better even before she has taken the first 
tablet or medication. We never laugh at the same joke, do we? So why do we frown for the same reasons? Now we know that the muscles used in smiling are more than the frown. So why do we smile? Let me tell you what happens when you smile. When you smile, a smile spurs a chemical reaction in your body, an explosion of hormones like dopamine and serotonin. It's like the fireworks, a party in your body. Dopamine is a happy hormone. It makes you happier, gets you excited. Serotonin brings down anxiety, relaxes you and keeps you down. You have heard a yawn being contagious, haven't you? Probably a sneeze too. Let me tell you something more contagious than that. More contagious than the COVID virus, the smile. And if you dare to share it and spread it, believe me, it will be in the community. Even forcing a smile. Sometimes you have not done well in a race. You haven't done well in a speech. And someone tells you, okay, chill, you know, cheer up and smile. And that's not the best of advice to get when you're feeling low and down in the dumps. But may I tell you, even forcing that smile ignites that reaction and it is beneficial. It is such a beautiful expression. The other person doesn't need to know your nationality, your religion, your language or anything about you. They will pick up the smile. So the next time you're off the stage when you've done a little bit of a blunder, hold on, finish your project, go backstage and smile it off or laugh it off. Even laughing at yourself is a beautiful attitude and a beautiful attribute. Well, friends, remember, anytime you're feeling low, there's a little chart. A little chart says, do you have a problem? If the answer is no, smile. If the answer is yes, can I do something about it or not? If I can, why not smile? If I cannot, it is out of our hands. Why not smile? Remember, a smile is happiness just under your nose. Flaunt it. It does increase your face value. Cheer up. Thank you very much. Wow, let us all have a round of applause for Toastmaster Lloyd. We can now have a minute of Silence for the comments in the chat box. month we are done with one minute thank you timer <clears throat> do you know why most people fail to say anything to their loved ones on valentine's day or answer anything back on the spot i'll tell you because they are either unaware or leave the meeting when we are at the second segment of the meeting yes the table topic section now our table topic master is everyone's favorite i know when I asked her who was her first crush ever, she said it was a new boy who walked in a class in the fifth grade. Over to you, Toastmaster Neil. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Vatei, Toastmaster Aman. And uh, thanks for sharing my secret also, because uh, till now I was thinking you were the youngest one who got the first crush. Now even I got it at that age. <laughs> Good evening, all the lovely, loving people out there. I welcome you all to a session of our meeting, which is very much like a romantic encounter. 
Now, as just now Dr. Lloyd said in his speech, a lot about some hormones running. So same way, a romantic encounter makes the adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin running into your body. And same thing happens when you are called upon to talk about a table topic in table topic sessions. So as we everyone know that romantic encounters are not bad, they are enjoyable. Same way, just take your table topic encounter also as something enjoyable. For the benefit of the guest, I would like to tell that this is the portion of our meeting which actually helps us in four ways. It helps us in developing our four communication skills. That is listening, thinking, organizing, and then delivering. And it is again similar to the romantic encounter where when you face somebody, you tend to listen to them which really gets lower and lower later, you start to think about them a lot, which probably gets again, lesser and lesser later. You organize yourself so as to impress them and you always try to deliver the best. So let us start with this romantic portion of our meeting, which is the table topic session. As our timer has already told us, that for a table topic, you will be given minimum, uh, minimum of one minute and maximum of two minute, 30 seconds. So all those out there who are participating for the first time, I would like to request till the time the timer gives you his green heart, keep going. To start with, I would like to ask the first volunteer, then I will go on my own. So the first volunteer for table topics. Toastmaster Akshay is not there. Usually he's the first one. No? Niru, you're wrong. I'm there. Okay. So how come you have not volunteered? I was waiting for you. No, no, no. I was, uh, no, I, I thought like, let's wait for others. You know, like I'm always thinking, but yeah, no problem. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead. So Tosma Satorio, uh, the time you have to make a sound device. Okay, you have to keep the sound device with you so that I can, uh, you know, I will get the indication. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll type it on chat. Okay, is it okay? Okay. Uh, yes. Yes. So yes. Tosma Sir Akshay, okay. you're on. Yes. Your table topic is the theme of today. Will you be my Valentine? If yes, no. If no, why? <laughs> If yes, why? If no, why? <laughs> okay. It was a fabulous theme by Toastmaster Aman. Will you be my Valentine? Kudos to you on that. Good evening, my fellow Toastmasters and guests. Toastmaster Niru. To be honest, nowadays, people are romantic in nature and especially during the college time but if you ask about me i am not a romantic person to tell you fact please say all indians are my brothers and sisters yes i do treat all my friends are my brothers and sisters, not only my friends, but also for my Toastmasters friends. And if I say the love with girlfriend, I'm not like that. I'm always simple. And in future, I'll try to become a simple person. Let's hope for the best. So Toastmaster Niru, what are your opinion on this? Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Akshay. But still, I didn't get my reply whether you will be my Valentine or not. 
So I take it as a no, no problem. Another uh, guest, uh, I would like to uh, call upon our guest, uh, Clyde, present there. Clyde? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just now you heard Toastmaster Akshay talk, uh, talking about being romantic or not being romantic. Okay. So I would like to ask you whether you consider yourself to be romantic or not. First, I want an answer, yes or no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well... Yes, I do consider myself romantic. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so uh, although I consider myself a romantic, uh, growing up, honestly, I've watched a lot of <laughs> romantic films and my idea of love and idea of romance is very idealized. Uh, that love should be something uh, meaningful, uh, something special that is what I believe uh, should be the goal of love so uh, personally uh, all of that uh, uh, influence growing up has made me uh, think of myself as somewhat of a knowledgeable person in romance and uh, and it helps me a lot in my relationship as well. Uh, so, uh, yes, I do consider myself a romantic and uh, it's, and I, and my, I use my romantic uh, self to further my love for the, my friends, family, and even my girlfriend. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. That was a really romantic reply. Uh, next up, I would like to call upon our guest, uh, Ritu. Ritu, kindly unmute yourself. So, uh, Ritu, I would like to ask you that what's the most romantic thing you have done or has been done to you? Uh, as as you know, told in the beginning that you're married, so I, I can ask this question, that what yeah, is the yeah, most romantic you thing yeah, yes, I, done to you or you have done for your okay. spouse? So I'll not brag about myself what I have done uh, to my husband, but rather I would like to say that uh, he, uh, my husband, he does so many things every day. Uh, like today, I would like to take the example of today. Today is he is in the kitchen right now. I was about I had to cook rajma chawal, and because I had this meeting, I had to come here. And he told me, "You go for the meeting. I'll take over." And right now he's in the kitchen. He's cooking, and I think this shows how romantic he is. He don't bring me flowers. He don't bring me gifts. But that's the way he shows his love to me. And I'm grateful to have him in my life. Go on. You have <laughs> Yeah. So the, I think uh, doing something, these, uh, these things uh, which matter to the person or your partner, doing all these things uh, make your relationship romantic rather than uh, doing, uh, trying to do something special out of it. So I think small gestures matter a lot in everyday life to keep the relationship going. And that's how the romance should continue and it should, it should go on. That's what I think. Thank you all. Thank you so much. And that's very sweet of you. If you were staying somewhere close by, I could have come for Rajma Chawal to your place for the night. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Okay, can I call upon, uh, there is one Dr. Sophia Rodriguez in the room. May I call upon you? If you could unmute yourself and switch on your video. Dr. Lloyd, I think she must be your friend or your guest. Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> she's there, yeah. Can you see me? Yes, yes. 
Yes, Dr. Sophia, the, now you've understood what actually table topic is. It's very simple. You just have to reply to what the question is. Okay, so uh, I would like to know that what is an ideal date for you? What is an ideal date for me? Yes. I go on a date every single day with myself. Um, and presently I'm driving towards Miramar Beach to do star gazing with my beautiful daughter here. Uh, so, so falling in love with yourself first is the most important thing to love others. And that's what I follow as a rule every single day in my life. And you will never, never give on yourself first to make others happy. Because if you are happy, you can make everybody else happy. Anything else you would so like to add on to? Okay. Thank you so much. And may both of you have a romantic evening at the beach doing your stargazing. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes. <laughs> Wish you the same. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Now, I would like to call upon uh, Vishwaja. Is she in the room? Yes. Okay, Vishwaja. Now, you are the one we aim to get married soon. So, say your views about love marriage and arranged marriage. <laughs> Why did I give you the role of the table topic master? We are listening. We are listening. Yes. <laughs> give clues to us. <laughs> Good evening, fellow toastmasters and guests. Let's start with love marriage. Love marriage is some is a beautiful, I'm I'm sure it will be a beautiful place because here you get to choose your spouse, your partner, and have some sweet moments before your marriage, before you get committed and have all the responsibilities over your head. And I'm also sure that in love marriage, you can be your true self before you get committed to that person in a long-term relationship so they know your true colors. And it would benefit both the people equally. When it comes to arranged marriage, I feel that initially I used to feel that people are completely unaware about who the other person is it's a complete mystery and how are they even sustaining with each other how is it even possible to be with a complete stranger as in before now at least people meet before a few times and then they get into a relationship but honestly looking at my parents and looking at my friends who have had uh you know my parents having arranged marriage and my friends having love marriage i feel it doesn't actually matter whether you are into a love marriage or an arranged marriage. What actually matters is that you respect the other person a lot. Even though maybe love could be a little less or more or a lot, but I feel you should respect yourself, the other person, and you should be ready and prepared to face any challenges that the life will throw at you collectively as a team, uh, as a whole. That's it, Toastmaster Meeru. That's great. That's great. Looks like you're ready for marriage now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Toastmaster David, this one is for you. It is basically a role playing. You are a weather reporter. Toastmaster David, can you please switch on your video? Is it there? Yes, thank you so much. Please unmute yourself. Okay, so the scene here is uh, you are a weather reporter. Okay. And you have to report that love is in the air. Toastmaster David, did you understand? Not yet. I'm not a good listener. Okay. My attribution is not in that. Come again. Okay. So it is like you are a weather reporter. Yes. And you have to report that love is in the air. Okay. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and friends. I'm audible, I think, over audible. Yes, you are. The weather to, tonight is so romantic, so filling. 
so lovely and the full moon is there around to tell you that you can be head over heels with anyone you meet tonight and today i'm going to take my wife for a dinner it's going to be a candlelight dinner she told me that she has got a new passport done today and the treat is on her so you see it's free food <laughs> so the weather is so pleasant and you can feel you heard the song love is in there so that is what it is going to be the temperature is just warm enough to heat up your hormones they can go wild you can do whatever you like because this is a night to remember it's a night a romantic evening with your wife is nothing better than anything in this world i would dream but this is just a dream my wife is not with me you see so i'm thinking if there any one available i can take them out this evening over to you table topic master thank you so much and uh, you set up a very nice scenario of uh, lovely weather and then you ended up with a sad story that your wife is not there now uh, timer uh, may i know whether i have time for one more uh, yes time for two more two more okay. just the two guest that is nutan and yes we have rita rita okay so rita uh, would you like to unmute yourself and please switch on your video also thank you so much now rita uh, if you can read the idiom of the day that is head over heels okay you have to present this idiom in a funny story way not in the literal sense but in a funny story way all right hello everyone good evening uh let me question you all is how did the idiom start head over heel can you imagine the theme i'm an architect so can, i have a picturesque um imagination <laughs> imagination so can you imagine head over heels it's like a yoga stance or something like that um but i would uh, take it in another sense is um i'm in love with my dogs and have you seen them um when they're really happy what do they do think about it and i would like to to leave you with that thank you thank you so much you are really an artist who have a wild imagination thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next, I would like to call upon our guest uh, Nuthan Kamath. Please unmute yourself and switch on your video. Thank you so much, uh, Nuthan. Just one question: Are you single or going around with somebody? Uh, single for now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then it's fine. Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> so I would like to ask you: Have you ever tried online dating? uh i have yes. actually okay okay uh, let me just complete the yes. scenario have you ever tried online dating if yes how it went okay if no why please go on uh so okay uh, so i have uh, basically i've been very skeptical about, about online dating but uh, being like you know around friends who've been like really using it a lot and having a lot of people outside goa because that's more free, you know you tend to use it a lot lot more uh, in metros and things like that i did give it a try uh, my experience i would say uh, has been pretty um, uh, i don't know like you get all sorts of uh, people uh, trying to you know uh, reach out to you um, so yeah uh, it, I, i don't think it works
I think she dropped off. Okay, same question if uh, somebody else can. Is she back? No. Okay, same question. Uh, Alvana, would you like to answer? Okay, Nutan is joining back, I think. Nutan, are you there? Please unmute. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Hello. carry on, carry on, carry on. Yeah, uh, I don't know where I lost her. I didn't realize I got off the call. Uh, so yeah, I've uh, given it a try. Uh, it's not really worked out well. As you see, I'm still uh, single. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, uh, online dating uh, has been hyped a lot, but I think uh, if I do give it, a, I've given it a break now, but uh, yeah, definitely give it a try again uh, sometime this year. Okay, thank you so much. So uh, uh, as far as my knowledge about online dating apps goes, it's some swipes, right, swipe, right, uh, left or something like that. So I can just hope that your swipes will work well next time. <laughs> yeah. oh, with that, I think I would like to sign off here. Tosma uh, Satorio, do I have more time? No. No. Oh, okay. My time is as it is over with dating app. <laughs> <laughs> so over to you, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Aman. Thank you so much, everybody who participated. Thank you, Toastmaster Niru. There were a bunch of fun table topics. Uh, Zoom Master, can we now have the voting polls for the prepared speeches first and then for the best table topic speaker? Yes, if everyone is done, can we have for the best table topic speaker too? Okay, if, can we now proceed? Okay. I'm sure most of you remember my humorous train journey speech. In that speech, I had spoken about a girl who we assumed was Simran. Now, when she got off the train and started walking, I got in the Shah Rukh Khan mood. I put the bag on my shoulder and said to myself, अमन अगर वो तुमसे प्यार करती है तो जरूर पलट के देखेगी पलट 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 एंड कम ऑन गाइज ऑल हैव रियली हाई एक्सपेक्टेशन फ्रॉम मी ऑफकोर्स इट इज नॉट टर्न हर डैड केम टू पिकर एप एट द स्टेशन शी वेन बैक होम विथ हर डैड या वेल विद दिस we now move on to the final and the most important section of the meeting but before that i have one question for the entire toastmaster family and you all can unmute yourself and say yes or no dear icg toastmaster family and of course the guest will you please be my valentine yes, yes. <laughs> i'm already booked aman 
<laughs> you can all go for a date on, on the 14th definitely. of February at so why did you already to take all of us on a date <laughs> yeah taking your let's go to the voting uh, how much has how much are funds for this month how much is the fund you've got from your parents <laughs> <laughs> okay. don't worry we have funds for all of y'all <laughs> <laughs> okay now now we move to the final section of the meeting that is the general evaluation section i asked the general evaluator if she could cel- if she could celebrate valentines day in like differently then how would she she gave us the most civic answer she said she would rather spend the day in a luxury spa and have an amazing desert spread <laughs> isn't that very cool over to you toastmaster alvina thank you very much toastmaster aman once again everyone i think he deserves this huge round of applause so thank you so much what an thank amazing you, amazing session really loved the way you did it and now let's get into the bread and butter of toastmasters what we all want and what we all really strive to hear for cuz why else then the evaluation session because it's only in this session where we learn and grow and become better toast masters so without much further ado i would first call upon our evaluators who will be evaluating our speakers so the first three speakers that came up today we have their evaluators ready geared up uh, i don't know how would use the word romantic here but yeah with their evaluations it would create they are romantic relationship with their speeches and public speaking journey i don't know if that made sense but you know i just tried using the word so first evaluator is toastmaster one second toastmaster ashish so toastmaster ashish you'll be evaluating toastmaster nelly over to you hi alvina thank you am i audible hello Yes, yes, yes you are the person. Thank you. Uh Nelly when I met you the topic itself you know caught our attention we were expecting a romantic meeting today and we what better than when I met you we thought something unfolds. And the opening was wonderful very nice a young girl sitting on the red second row I don't remember second or third row you said and it was a very touching thing it's a personal anecdote that you started with a teacher asu whom you referred to as and you described her uh, leadership style that is a pace setting leader or a motivational leader <clears throat> and you know how you imbibed it from her how really motivation passes on from one to another person how it is transcribed rather than just adapted or adopted she described very nicely as compassionate and she paid special attention to the weaker ones and that's what you have chosen probably you have imbibed so well that you have chosen to lead the especially able children to help them out and you have imbibed it very rightly the body was again well constructed you went on to students what life lessons they have and how, what they teach you as an individual and how does this you know one should learn to smile during testing times very nice phrases stand and lead from the front lead by example and the emotional theories attached to it uh, then you know you were very clear in your spoken english it was very clear and clearly understandable you vocal variety you know you used the tone and speed they are your tools but i'll come to it later maybe a little more of fluctuations in it the pitch variations would help you further add the flavor to your speech the use eye contact very well uh, so it's you 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 know engage the audience well with that your gestures are also you know add to enhance your speech delivery and you are aware of the audience needs and how to engage them uh, also you appeared very comfortable when you were speaking and you you know engaged audience with a good constructed content overall you delivered an excellent speech about the leadership style that you imbibed and that became your personal leadership style uh, just two quick suggestions 
you know, when you move forward on an online platform, when you move forward, you come into a lot into the screen. So you should be aware of the distance that and the sound also very, it becomes very loud and imposing. Uh, I personally felt that the conclusion could have been a little more. It was a little abrupt when you ended with the same title as when I met you and vocal tonal fluctuation was good. Uh, you really use well words. Linga today scream her lungs out. Every child has a story to tell. So I would say you have achieved your goal of becoming a special educator, a very much needed professional for specially abled young gen today, which has ample opportunities for pace setting motiva or motivational leadership style, which is yours. And I am head over heels with your zeal and leadership in your noble profession. All the best, Nelly. Over to you, General Evaluation. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Ashish. It was a really good uh, evaluation. Thank you. Now we move on to the next evaluator, that is Toastmaster uh, Shantanu, who will be evaluating Toastmaster RT. So Toastmaster Shantanu, over to you. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and my dear guests. My speaker for today, Toastmaster RT, made a fabulous speech. Uh, telling about her various leadership styles that she's experienced throughout her life. And it made me really go head over heels for her. And this is being said for a person who really doesn't consider himself very romantic. So firstly, Toastmaster Aarti, your speech was well-structured. It had four segments, and I could clearly identify each segment from the other. Initially, you gave the current situation of the elections as your introduction, beautifully said. You spoke about the different people, such as your parents, your teachers, and the close friends that have influenced your life. Segment two and three were the two instances that you hold very close to your heart. The first one being, and the most relatable, something which most of us have experienced, the autocratic leadership style of every single maths teacher in the fourth grade. We then went to the 10th grade teacher who had paternal leadership skills and that's something I've still not experienced. So kudos to you for having such an experience. You had good amount of humor throughout your speeches. I love that Bollywood comment. And I think many of us right here just chuckled when you said that. You used the prop beautifully and exactly on time. Your fourth segment was where you spoke leadership in general and what you inculcated in your own life. You like to you've learned democratic leadership to be your style. And I think through this speech, we've seen the progress and seen how you've inculcated it, for example, in your daughter's incidents. How initially, like the typical parent, you wanted to be authoritative and just impose whatever you wanted in her. But it was through your experiences that you finally identified your leadership style. Your conclusion was that even if you are a leader, a born leader, you don't have to stick to a particular style. And I think that's something that we should all take in for us. We all have different platters of leadership and we shouldn't stick to just one. We have different phases and we should just go from one leadership style to the other. You had good stage presence. Whenever you wanted to speak directly to the audience, you came forward. As soon as you went into the story, you went behind and had a more relaxed uh, composure. Gave a very important moral that everybody has their own leadership style and most importantly we we influence the, uh, the leadership styles of people around us if i could give a recommendation to you postmaster rp you had good eye contact throughout the speech yet at times you seemed a bit distracted and you lost eye contact with us knowing that it is an online meeting we still should keep on the eye contact, because it really, really engages all of us. All in all, a well-structured and well-set speech. Looking forward to more speeches of you, Toastmaster Arti. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Shantanu. Now we move on to our final evaluator. <clears throat> That's Toastmaster Vishwaja, who will be evaluating Toastmaster Lloyd's speech. So over to you, Toastmaster Vishwaja. Thank you, General Evaluator, Toastmaster Alvina. It is said that a smile a day keeps the doctor away. 
An advice to smile coming from a doctor is ironical. But Toastmaster Lloyd's speech was so impactful that I fell head over heels on his choice of words and his enthusiasm. Good evening for the Toastmasters and guests and my lovely speaker, Toastmaster Lloyd. Whenever I listen to any speech, I look for these two things. One, a good beginning, a curious title, and two, a story. And Toastmaster Lloyd's speech had both of them. Thus, this was a bonanza speech for me. To express himself, he used voice modulation, pauses, two unique props, and an amazing message. Flaunt that prettiest curve. Toastmaster Lloyd has his way with words. His romance with words was significant with the phrases like receive, interpret, and respond, or attitude and attribute. And there were thought-provoking messages. Example, when he said, we do not laugh over the same joke over and over again. Then why do we worry about the same things over and over again? If you noticed, Toastmaster Lloyd used good voice modulation, especially when he said dopamine. He was happy and excited. And, we, and when he talked about serotonin, he was sad. And his voice was soft, slow. So this variation could be used to show difference in emotions. As an evaluator, I have to give a few suggestions for this speech. So thus, these are my two cents. First, Toastmaster Lloyd, I personally felt that your hand movements were quite frequent. I believe the reason for this is either due to lack of preparation or out of overenthusiasm or out of nervousness. Second, we have always seen you as a very bubbly, chirpy kind of energetic person. But I would personally love to hear a personal deep anecdote from you wherein we could know how a smile radiated positivity in your stressful life. That is how it helped you overcome your difficulties. And third, and this is my personal favorite trick which I use in my speeches, you might give it a try. That is, whenever I tell a story in the beginning, I purposefully keep it incomplete before saying the greetings. That is, in your story, you could have said, so the third person said that this was very kind. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. What do you think is the moral of this story? When you keep a story incomplete, it hooks the audience even more. All in all, it was a fantastic speech and everybody's reply in the comments was prominent and evident these are my two cents. All the best for your future speeches. And since your message was so good, I would say it again. Everyone, flaunt that pretty curve. Thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster Alpina. Thank you very much, Toastmaster Vishwajab. <laughs> Thank you very much, Toastmaster Vishwajab. Okay, uh -huh. and with this... Yes? Master Alpina, can we have the voting for the best evaluator? Okay, I was about to get to that. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's do that. Um, yes, with this, we are done with our three evaluators. Uh, we will proceed with the voting. And while the voting is going on, maybe. Yeah, everybody, it's on your screen. Vote for the best one. Or didn't you need the timing? Yeah, everybody qualified. Ah, time. okay, fine. <laughs> Tell me when I can, I can proceed, okay? Yes, you can proceed now. Oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. And <laughs> okay, so uh, um, for my guests, if you all have, uh, what we do is when we give our evaluations is we do not always go to the negative side or the constructive side. We rather first would like to congratulate them on some good aspects, then give them a few recommendations. And so that we don't leave them broken hearted, we again slap on a few of good recommendations. So that's what all our three evaluators did. And I'm really pleased with the way they have, they have evaluated. 
I really like the suggestions and I know my speakers have now a truckload of things to work on because of the keen listening and observation skills of our evaluators. So good job, all my evaluators. And then moving on to the role players now. So we have the reports from our different role players who throughout the meeting, they did not say anything, but they were keenly observing each and every one of you. So first up, we have the grammarian who will be giving the report. So I would request the grammarian, that is DTM Mukta, to please uh, give your report. Thank you so much, General Evaluator Alvina. Today, there has been such amazing language. I could speak for five minutes, but I know I have only two. So let me give a very quick report. The word of the day was so simple and that's why it was used so effectively and in such large measures. It was used 31 times the word of the day and the idiom of the day head over heels was used four times. This is probably Probably the most it's ever been used, you know, the word of the day. So let's give everybody a round of applause. I would have liked to mention everybody that used it, but it would just take too long. Today, there was very little poor language usage. And there was only two that I could find in the entire meeting, which is outstanding. The first one is romantic things done too. I know you can do romantic things to uh, people and to things, but in this context, it should have been romantic things done for. We are doing things for somebody. So you should have used the word for instead of to. And proposing our Valentine, proposing to our Valentine. Those were the only two small errors. Tons of good usage. And here I am going to give credit to all those who used the good words. Stuti, our Sergeant Tams used the word charismatic. Aman had plenty of good usage, but just two highlights, love gurus and secret crush. Our listener, Monica, when she explained her role, she said, value of being a good listener. Uh, Nelly, let's go to the speakers. Nelly, Arti, and Lloyd, amazing language. I could have written your whole speech, but just to highlight some, Nelly used non-performers, base setting leadership, and emulate. Arti, enthralling, Herculean, subtle yet powerful, phobia, and rational conversations. And Lloyd used flaunt the prettiest curve. Actually, your title itself was beautiful. Apprehensive, crinkle, transmitted, and positive vibes. And to match the speaker with the evaluators, let me to, uh, tell you the evaluators also used equally good language. Ashish used pitch variations, loud and imposing. Shantanu used four segments. Shantanu, you always have very simple descriptive words and four segments stuck in my mind. And Vishwaja, she, uh, you used curious title, Bonanza speech. The other um, names that I have, uh, I'd like to compliment Arti's husband who also used the word of the day when he introduced his wife, which is really commendable. Um, we had our table topics master Niru, fantastic language. She was the one who used the word of the day nine times. And some of the words were listening, thinking, organizing and delivering is what she said. Very quickly to our table topic speakers, Clyde used meaningful, special. Ritu used small gestures. Uh, Sophia used stargazing. Vishwaja, true colors. Um, David, heat up your hormones. I mean, pretty interesting uh, line. And Rita, picturesque. Uh, Albina, our general evaluator, used a wonderful thing that evaluation is our bread and butter and truckload of things. With that, I end my um, language evaluation. It's been an amazing session. Thank you all so much. Back to general evaluator. Thank you very much, DTM Mukta. That was a very detailed and amazing report. Thank you so much for it. And now we move on to the 
time is report that is toastmaster sartorio wow the timing of this uh, whole meeting was pitch perfect you know right from the start toastmaster stuti she started right on time among the speakers toastmaster arti her time was 7 minutes 29 seconds and 5 seconds so you just script to i think it's your husband's luck that can came to today but uh, yeah that was good the evaluators also qualified what really impressed me today is though we had so many guests we had only one disqualification there is dr sofia i could guess because she was traveling and still she made it a point to turn on her camera and attend for it so her timing was 40 seconds rest of you you know the guest out here you all have a amazing future as speakers even our time we are back on time except if toastmaster alvina decides to talk too much over to you, you general director oh thank you very much timer toastmaster sartorio we have two more reports so don't blame me only and now moving on to our the r counter that's toastmaster radhakrishna remember yeah. toastmaster sartorio is warning don't be light no, i'm kidding <laughs> take your time <laughs> no i will take a less time thank you general evaluator uh, it was a wonderful speech by all three speeches uh, speakers that's why i concentrate on speech speakers only not evaluator and others first speaker nelly rodriguez uh, language was very good but uh, i could not find many r with her she pause whenever the pauses come she used very intelligently the silence to overcome that it was actually beneficial for her as well as uh, the audience so there was no r at all in her speech and second speaker ardi ayer instead of keeping silent she paused or pauses she filled with the gestures so again there was no a uh, or uh, uh, and only one place she used the repeat word but and another place much more and much more so twice otherwise it was a flawless speech and i need not tell about lawyer speech in fact i forgot initially to count the hours <laughs> i have forgot my role itself by listening to him it was pause filled with gestures he also very wisely used his pauses with his gestures so there was no need of uh, using any a uh, or hum and it was very fluent speech so interesting and uh, you know even the role player forget his role because listening the speech was very much interesting so other general elevator if i permitted to say only two places she used okay okay then vishaja used to or and or that's all thank you thank you thank you very much toastmaster radha krishna and now we move on to our final uh, second last segment that is the listen up segment uh, i would request toastmaster monica to you know show off the yeah. skills thank thank you toastmaster alvina um, today i realized how interesting it is to play this particular role because i could notice make a note of uh, small small things which made the speeches very very interesting so i have few questions for all of you just to see whether you were listening to so my first question is very simple what can men do to live five years longer according to toastmaster stuti is their wives their wives good there were two regional words one was used by tm nelly and the other one was used for her 
One was used before the meeting could start. So there were 15 participants at that time. I think they were listening. Can anybody tell me uh, which were the two regional words used? Koshish. Koshish was one Hindi word which was used by TM Nelly. Can you tell me one re other regional word which was used for her? Bebe. Bebe, which was a Konkani <laughs> word. Uh, there was an adjective used by TMOD Aman for his evaluators. What was the adjective used by him? He used a special adjective for the evaluators. Love gurus. Love, Love gurus. gurus. Excellent. Love gurus. If we go for dinner to Ritu Yadav's house today, what will be served for dinner today? Rajma Chawal. <laughs> <laughs> How does Toastmaster Monica's husband express his love to her? Adrak wali chai. A phrase was used by Dr. Nadia for her Valentine doctor lawyer, which is a metaphor. Also. Wind beneath my wings. Wind yes, the wind beneath, beneath my wings. What adjective did our special guest who introduced Toastmaster Arti used for her in reference to food? Swiggy, Swiggy. She's a Swiggy. <laughs> Which are the two sports that she participated in when she was in college? Basketball, uh, basketball and javelin throw. Javelin throw. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> now, just tell me the exact location or where uh, Toastmaster Nelly used to sit when she was in third grade. The row. The third row, second, second row, and third second row, third feet. <laughs> third bench, second row. You got, you the, number. Enter. You got the number. <laughs> okay. Last question that I have is there was one speaker today who said that his listening skills are not good. David, uh, sorry. Toastmaster David. Toastmaster David. Toastmaster David. Yes. Toastmaster David. Toastmaster David. Toastmaster David. So these are a few questions. There are many which I have written actually, but the, there is a time uh, constraint. So I will uh, stop here. It was nice playing this role. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Toastmaster mm -hmm. Monica. Wow, that was, <laughs> that was a really mm -hmm. good session. Mm -hmm. Everybody had fun. So everybody has good listening skills, huh? Yes. Good job. <laughs> okay, and now without much further ado, we enter into the final segment. That's my speech. <laughs> so first up, I'm sorry, I couldn't stop it. Okay, first up, uh, I would like to thank and congratulate our Toastmaster of the day. I really loved your team, but what I loved the most was the way you executed your team. Like even before the meeting, I noticed in the group chat, the way you were engaging each and every member and everyone was so into it. Good job, really hats off the creativity level. Then even during the meeting, calling up uh, their loved ones to introduce them, special guests, amazing, good, good. It shows how much of effort you put in and trust me, your efforts have paid off. It has got all the members motivated and this is what you know enables the meeting to go on really well. So even if it's a long meeting, everyone's forgiven because it was a good meeting. So good job on that. Then coming to my speakers, Nelly, Arti, and Lloyd. You three were amazing. I won't go much into that because your evaluators adequately really covered it up, gave you all good feedback, and also gave you all good recommendations. Then moving on to my table topics, uh, Toastmaster Nehru. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. But ne uh, forget the table topics master. I'm so sorry. Anyways, I really, really loved your topics. And I really, really love that you had your guests involved. What happens is guests normally are a little hesitant, but you were so encouraging and your topics were so simple. It was so easy to talk about them. So really good job on that. I really, really loved the way you also handled the table topic session. You know, it's, it's really nice. It's a good job. And to all my table topics speakers, first of all, congratulations for attempting a table topics. I know it's scary, it's difficult, but you all did it. 
for that one two minutes you did it and now i know you can speak better later on so congratulations to all of you all that have attempted the table topics now i'm coming to the final segment that is the evaluation segment uh, my evaluators uh, what i uh, i really loved the way you all evaluated and i love that you all kind of uh, reiterated their speeches but you really reiterated in such a way that uh, the points were highlighted like you did not just say yes you had good voice modulation you had good uh, speech structure and etc but you said you gave an example throughout their speech so what this did is for the audience is everyone understood okay he's he or she is referring to that segment of the speech so all my evaluators once again great job you not only help your evaluators but you help your audience as well to understand and maybe even learn a few tricks i, I don't know why but i really liked viswajas the um, this of the story mid story and then greet and then i was like oh that's a good trick thank you so well done evaluators and then coming to my role players my role players wow i liked the way you gave your reports you know it's very when you attend too many meetings it becomes really mundane to give a normal report but the timer did a good job the accountant did a good job the listen up segment good job the grammarian also i loved that you did not just go into the rote of uh, reporting each and everyone that did the uh, who said the word of the day but rather you focused more on the good usages and that was good it encouraged a lot of people and it taught them also many new words overall the meeting was great i'm speaking really fast because i can see that the time is ticking so <laughs> overall the meeting was amazing thank you so much for inviting uh, some feedback would be is um i don't know you all did as much of as you all could any more than that would be you know sky is the limit you all you all are icd toastmasters club all can i you all are, you all you all big boundaries so good job on that hats off to the president and the vp ed all your efforts are being shown so and and good job to all the members as well because i mean they can work hard as much but if you members don't put in your leg and foot and heart in it then it won't work so good job on that thank you so much amazing meeting keep up the good work over to you president toastmaster sartorio thank you toastmaster alvina and i think today i have broken your boundary you have spoken little less i don't know how that was possible but thanks a lot so before we carry on uh, we'll have the final voting for the day i'll launch the poll and this is for the tech team players and the major role players okay i think we can end the poll so thanks a lot and a special shout out as toastmaster alvina said to toastmaster aman you prepared the meeting well and it was great that you started off way in advance so kudos to that thank you so now let me come to the important people of today the vips the guest my brother in uh, interest in history was must applied can you give your feedback yeah uh so uh just like uh, the previous meeting i attended as a guest uh today also the speeches of absolutely fantastic uh nelly arti i completely loved like uh, the idea about the management 
uh, like leaders, mentors in your life, like how impactful they can be on your growth as a person. Absolutely love that. Because personally, I also, actually my math teacher was not uh, authoritarian, but uh, my math teacher, my history teacher, they helped me grow. And it's because of that reason why I fell head over heels over history because I had a really great history teacher. So that was, I love those speeches and Floyd, uh, Lloyd's speech, absolutely amazing. Love that. Um, table topics also was very interesting and fun this time. Uh, and uh, obviously the evaluators, I love the way that they structure everything. Uh, the feedback is very insightful. I also learned a lot of different ways that you can improve speaking. Uh, so yeah, uh, overall fantastic. Yeah, I would love to join uh, again. Clyde, you know, by these two days, you have to get the Toastmaster Clyde. <laughs> yeah. And, I'll, you. yeah and, I'll, uh, just do it. You know, I know you want to research, but to research, yeah. you are only delaying your time by doing more research. <laughs> Next yeah, time I'll make you cheat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, and yeah, of course, I would love to have you as a member and your speech about the formation of uh, Penjim City. Yeah. I would love to hear that. And yeah. besides history, I, I think you're also classmates with Vishwaja. I would like to know a bit of history about her also. So. Uh, about Vishwaja, she's... Not now. Uh, not now. Later. Later. <laughs> 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 That's all I can say. She's fantastic. I don't know yes. Negative feedback here. <laughs> Not that there is any negative feedback. Yeah. Thank you, Clyde. Thank you, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see you soon in ICG Toastmasters Club. Yeah. Next, we have Ritu Yadav. I, Ritu, I can see you're smelling the chole, chole batore your uh, husband has made. You know, we won't keep you further. Can you give your feedback? Can you unmute? Yeah, I'm saying I'll keep it very short. And uh, this is my second Toastmasters meeting. And I really enjoyed the last one. That's why I, I couldn't resist to attend the second one uh, when you invited me for this meeting today. So I was actually... Uh, thinking uh, whether to join or not, uh, will the timings match or not. So I I think uh, my decision is going towards, uh, uh, I, I will be making my decision very soon and I'll come back to you. So thank you for having me here and giving me the opportunity to talk to you all and interact. Thank you. Ritu, you have already told us that your husband is very accommodating and so now you have no excuse. Yes, yes. You have to join. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's the one who is pushing me. Yes, you should do it. And so, oh, yeah. You have an extremely time loving time. husband. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. Next, uh, we have Miss Rita, who had, uh, I think, a very good looking dog close to her. Miss Rita Joshi. Okay, let's uh, go to my IT friend, Nutan Kamat. Can you give me your feedback, Nutan? Oh uh, yeah, hey, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. And I'm glad I kind of joined it because I'd almost made up my mind. I wouldn't have been having a very hectic past two days, uh, but uh, glad to be part of this. And I pretty, like, really enjoyed the way uh, it has been structured, uh, the way it has been uh, you know, put together. So I like that about this. And also very good speeches. Uh, it's always good to listen to people. And in fact, uh, Nelly brought up Miss Asu, who was my teacher back in Rosaries. And it was very nice. Uh, nice to always see people or know people who know <laughs> people I've worked with or, uh, you know, have a mentor under so it was really nice and even the other speeches by RP and uh, Dr. Lloyd fabulous so looking forward to more unless 
time and stone match that would be my only concern because these meetings might just be overlapping with my office meetings but uh, hopefully uh, i'll be you know joining soon and looking forward to more of this i think nutan if your office meeting are ex lovely and exciting as this meeting you don't have a choice you have to join <laughs> yeah I'll, i'll try for that next we have the friend of dr cool uh, dr sophia can you unmute hi yes thanks a lot for taking up the table topic when you are traveling so thank you, you so are really much <laughs> thank you so in fact you all kept me totally hooked up to the entire 2 hours from 7 and i was actually doing my online consultations did my clinic through and drove my daughter to the beach to see the moon and the stars so it was thoroughly entertaining all the three speakers kept me on online otherwise i normally get bored of meetings and exit out uh, i really enjoyed the speeches of all the three speakers uh thank you dr lloyd for inviting me over and thank you to all of y'all for such a lovely evening i finally reached home so now it's going to go beyond 40 seconds <laughs> <laughs> okay and dr <laughs> sophia you, so you said you love yourself so if you love yourself yes, you definitely join the toast masters club and for sure if you love yourself for very sure. much you join the icg toast masters for sure i'm just bang opposite close by over there to i think you'll normally have it at the international hotel at at uh, uh, yes, international sir. hotel goa so i work at manipal hospital which is just oh. next door to okay so may, maybe in our next meeting you can come in as a member yes i'll i'll take your details from dr lloyd so don't worry yeah thank you so much thank you next we have fe Is my pronouncing it correct? Yes. Okay, Rita, are you ready? Give your feedback. Oh yes. I, I loved it. It was uh, such a lovely session. and uh, it's actually built up the tempo for valentines day so it's brilliant and uh, actually i've been uh, um too many committees and involved and this was a, a very interesting um uh i would call it a program which is not program because everything was so impromptu and so beautiful i loved it thank yeah. you so much so uh, rita in, in case you join this will be the best committee you join in the most fun <laughs> and yeah uh, offline meetings uh will be 10 times more fun than a online meeting so thank you i'll try and make time thank yeah. you i also get your details somehow and try to convince you to join. Yeah. Thank you. So I, our last guest, you know, we have the president of the Maps Sato Masters Club. Coach Master David, can you give your feedback? we can't hear you but i think you are saying uh, i think you the best something okay next time okay. he's saying you have to unmute me no the zoom master okay yeah can you hear me now yes <laughs> i would like to change the acronym from icu to ic greatness icg is greatness <laughs> lovely i initially came to hear my friend dr lloyd but then your performance your 
role players were so excellent, far excellent, you can say. I got grooved into it. I had a lot of work to do, but I said, no, this is a place I can learn a lot of things from you all. Because my hero was Lloyd, but I think most of your role players were doing such a great job. Even GE Alvina, he performed well the final. Even the young man, Aman. Wow, I could say, and I got a lot of words to use for my wife. I only got to put some sincerity into it when I talked to her on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. Good night. Thank you for the great. Lloyd, I got to thank you a lot for inviting me. Pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> Satyaru, you invited me, not Lloyd. Thank you, Satyaru. President. Thank you. <laughs> Toastmaster David, let me tell you, you have something in common with all the ladies in ICG. I can't, I didn't, I didn't get you. You have something in common with all the ladies in ICG. Most probably, we should have. Even their hero is Dr. Lloyd. So. Okay. okay. <laughs> so now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for all the efforts that all the speakers have put in. It's the winners of the day. Let me share my screen. Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay. The best speaker goes to Mr. Dr. Kuhl, Postmaster Lloyd. Congrats, Thank Lloyd. You. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, the best evaluator. I think it goes in pairs. So the evaluator for Postmaster Lloyd, a very bubbly VP education, Postmaster Vishwaja. Thank you. The best major role player? I don't think there's any doubt. Shahrukh Khan, Aman. Yes. Toastmaster Aman. Aman. And I think I revealed the listener too fast. So the, the best tag L player was Master Monica. Congrats, Master Monica. Congratulations. And the best table topic speaker. Vishwaja. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Uh, I always thought only the lovers, you know, have a have a scope with Vishwaja. But today David. he gave <laughs> the arranged marriage guys also some hope. So David. the best oh, David Vishwaja. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so that was it from the award ceremony. I have a few uh, announcements to make. We have a contest on the 6th of March. It will be an online contest. And I urge everybody who has completed uh, the two levels to give their names for the prepared speeches. And everybody can give their names for a table topic speech. It's generally a 10 trend that uh, whoever wins over here goes further. We also require role players for the contest. So please give your names for Vishwaja. Our next meeting will be on the 24th of February. Now I got a go ahead from our doctors in the club that we can make it an offline meeting. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay, so we'll... I'll definitely take it to our XCOM and try to make it an offline meeting. And our newsletter committee, you know, it's made up of uh, Gajanan and Delhi. We are waiting for, your, for you to be a pen master. So please do write our articles and maybe you'll become famous. The ICJ newsletter does go places. Okay, so that was it. I think we are slightly late. So to end the meeting, I would one like picture, to quote. Doctor. Sorry? One picture. Yes. Which picture can you take? Yes. Everybody please switch on your videos and flaunt that prettiest curve. <laughs>
<laughs> Ready? One, two, three. Oh, you can make hearts since it's Valentine's. One, two, three, smile. Yeah. One more. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I would like to end the meeting by a quote by Dr. Zeus. He says that, you know you are in love and you can't fall asleep because reality is finally better than your dreams. Thank you, everybody. See you for the next meeting. All right. Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.